Hey guys, it's Bryce back with another music review, and today we're going to be taking a look at Lauren Daigle's debut album, How Can It Be? Um, Lauren Daigle's uh, first album, uh, produced back in 2015 by Centricity Music, and I am going to be reviewing the deluxe version of this, and there are 17 tracks uh, t in total for this album, and so I apologize if any of my explanations of the songs are uh, brief, but we've got a lot of stuff to cover, so let's get to the uh, very uh, first track of the album, which is First. You know, on, on that note real quick, I hope whenever Lauren makes her last album, I hope to God, I'm calling this right now, I hope, I hope that her very last track is called Last. Because that would just be the perfect, um, that would be the perfect ending, you know, because I don't think any, I don't think any other artist has done that. That would be, that would be awesome. Anyway, uh, about the song itself. So, you know, it's overall pretty, um, modest kind of a pop sound, um, uh, pretty average speed to it. The chorus is really big, um, uh, Lauren's voice especially, and it's got, uh, you know, at that point, it's got real drums uh, in uh, in with it. Aside from uh, uh, the programming, and uh, the programming's a little bit um, less moving in that part. And what I mean by that is, uh, uh, it's pretty it's pretty kind of all over the place. But then when the chorus comes along, it's a lot more uh, laid back. Um, the singer is proclaiming God is first in everything in her life, and she looks to make it even more so. Uh, every day so uh, good good start uh, to the album it really kind of helps uh, portray what type of voice Lauren has and it leads perfectly I think into the next song uh, how can it be um, so this has got uh, starting off like a piano and some weird type of noise effect that's going on in the background I don't really know what it is um, but the uh, the first chorus adds strings, and there's more accompaniment that's added throughout the song. And um, it, it, I feel like with this song, there's a tremendous balance that's going on between the music and the vocals. Uh, the from the writing and mixing uh, perspective, especially um, the sing So in this one, the singer can't understand why God would defend or die for or free her, um, uh, she being someone who doesn't deserve it. And it's it's an absolutely amazingly uh, written song, ironically not written by Lauren herself, but um, great uh, great song to listen to, and I highly highly recommend this one. Uh, track three is Trust in You. So, uh, with this, um, the beginning is got some, uh, keyboard chords with what sounds to me like plucking of some sort, like maybe from a guitar or some string instrument. I'm not, not entirely sure, but, um, there, there are other, uh, strings that do get involved in this as well. Uh, overall, it's got kind of like a modest sort of pop sound to it it's slightly faster than first but it actually has a straight beat as opposed to uh first which did not uh so, so the singer sings of how she will trust god even when it seems god is not working with her um and that gets emphasized in the chorus with uh, lyrics like moving mountains and parting seas and uh uh answering what god whether uh, he answers her prayers or not so, again, another really good song. Um, I'm probably not as good as "How Can It Be," but um, it's 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 got it's got its own little uh, sense of catchiness to it, which is nice. Uh, track four is "My Revival." So this one is a little as a slower pace, but you know it's it's again it's still you know pretty pretty laid back, pretty modest overall. Um, it's a praise song that depicts Jesus as the source of the singer's strength. There's really not much else I can say about that. It's, you know, it's okay. It's not one of my favorites, but it's okay. Um, track five is Loyal. 
Um, this one um, has a nice mod. A lot of these songs have I call I call a modest feel to it. It's just I just don't really know how else to describe it. It's like it's not trying to be. It's not trying to be flashy. It's not trying to be anything except just very naturally written. And this song is another demonstration of that. Um, it's, it's it's doesn't have a really glaring pop beat either. A lot of her a lot of her songs and a lot of just songs that I hear on the radio in general have a really glaringly pop beat. This one kind of sort of has one, but it's not like in your face about it. Uh, so the song is about God's love and how unconditional it is. It really is. And, and um, again, it's a it's a good song. Not quite as good as How Can It Be, but it is a good, uh, it's a good song. How Can It Be, I'm sorry, is just probably, I'll go ahead and say it's probably the best song on this entire album. This is like uh, Lauren's I Can Only Imagine, in a sense. It's just so good. Anyway, uh, b- uh, back to the track list. Uh, track six is Power to Redeem. And this one has... Um, kind of a contemporary pop sort of feel to it like i hear elements of both in it and i i like the melody line in the chorus that's probably the to me the best part about the song just kind of how the melody sounds uh it's really a simple song about god's redemption I, again there's really not much else to say about this it's a it's a solid song to have it's it it might not necessarily be something that you're going to remember, but you're going to enjoy it, I think, while you listen to it. So uh, it's the, one of those types of songs. Track seven, Here's My Heart. So um, this one is written was actually written by uh, Jason Ingram, Louis Giglio, and Chris Tomlin. And I'm not sure about Jason Ingram. I think he's associated with Sparrow, but I know Louis Giglio obviously owns Sparrow. And Chris Tomlin is one of, you know, the biggest stars that Sparrow has. So I find, so I just, I found it kind of um, interesting that um, this song was written by them and it was uh, performed by an artist from Centricity Music. I don't, somebody will have to let me know if Chris Tomlin himself or if any of the other uh, Sparrow uh artists if any of them have recorded a version of here's my heart because honestly if they have i'm not aware of it but so that would be something interesting to find out so anyway about the song itself uh at first it sounds uh kind of like the previous one power to redeem but um it gets a lot stronger later um and that is one thing that kind of hurts it a little bit for me. It does take a bit to get off the ground, but once it's off the ground, it sounds really, really good. Singer is surrendering herself to God because he is everything to and for her. That's basically the gist of the song. Um, track eight is Oh Lord, and this one's got kind of a uh, soulful pop to it. In fact, matter of fact, it really kind of sounds like it's taken right out of a right out of um the group unspoken's page which would make complete sense because unspoken is also a centri- uh, centricity uh, music artist so as that, if that was intentional then that is actually kind of cool it's a little different um the vocals sound really good in this one the singer has faith that god will take the bad things in her life and uh use them for good uh, even removing them in due time. Uh, she also resolves to stand firm in that faith that God will do those things. Um, it's really uh, it's really nice. I, I, I just everything really fits together uh, well in this one and I and from what I understand this song has finally uh, kind of become its own now as far as uh, radio hits. so uh, good for that. Uh, Trek. Uh, what am I on here? Track nine is "I Am Yours." Uh, the song is reminiscent of uh, some of the previous ones, but with a slight blend of uh, pop and maybe even I, I maybe even a little hint of waltz in it. And I I, I put waltz down because it's just, I really wasn't entirely sure how else to describe this. Um, I haven't reviewed this song yet, but 
There's parts of I Am Yours that remind me of Chris August's song, The Maker. It has um, that sort of a, uh, it's not a full-on bouncy type of chorus, but it has um, it has a certain kind of a bound to it, if that makes sense. Um, as far as the message goes, uh, the singer sees evidence of God in creation and knows uh, she belongs to him. That's pretty much the gist of the song. Uh, not one of my favorites necessarily, but it's um, again, it's pretty pretty good overall. And if you know, if if that's more your, uh, I guess, uh, style, <laughs> then uh, you know you might enjoy the song a little bit more than me. But um, um, yeah, I just I I think it's a fair comparison. Go listen to Chris August's song "The Maker" and then listen to this one, and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about in the comparison. By the way, I love Chris August's song "The Maker," but anyway, um, track ten is "Come Alive" and um, in parentheses "Dry Bones." So "Come Alive, Dry Bones," and this one to uh, from what I get from this one is like a contemporary pop mix again. Only this one's a lot better than "Power to Redeem." Um, in this one, uh, so I have, uh, borrowing from Ezekiel, uh, singer prays for God to restore the life in those who have strayed from God. Um, it's, this I find is really good songwriting. Everything, everything comes together so well in this. And I just, I love, um, I love, uh, you know, using the analogy that was mentioned, uh, or in Ezekiel about, um, you know, the dry bones coming to life in the last days, and also just kind of applying that in a sense to, uh, you know, people even today who, you know, they're, they're dead, but, you know, if once they find God, they'll be brought back to life in a sense. So it's, it's just really overall, this is really good songwriting. I've heard this, you know, performed by uh, several different people, but I mean, just, you know, at the very first time I heard this, actually, first time I heard Lauren sing it, I didn't think that um, she sang it that well. But the more times I've gone back and listened to it, I've actually completely uh, flipped my opinion. I think she sings this very, very well, and I enjoy listening to her sing it. Track 11 is Salt and Light. Uh, so the background in this one is kind of dominated by the acoustic guitar and the occasional strings, uh, specifically the cello. Uh, funny enough, uh, Jesus is the one who is called Salt and Light in the song. Normally that is applied to the body, but um, in in this case, it's uh, Jesus who is depicted as uh, Salt and Light. I mean, yeah, we call Je- I mean. We rec- we've recognized a lot that Jesus is the light, but um, usually when you hear, like I said earlier, though, usually when you hear the expression "salt and light," uh, it's usually that's usually a reference to uh, believers, but in this case, it's not. And the song tells uh, of some of the things that uh, Jesus did or and still does to this day, and the singer wants to be a part of it, basically. So overall, pretty good song, and track twelve, and this would um, this would actually end the normal album, uh, is once and for all. Uh, this one is piano only, and the singer is laying herself at the feet of Jesus, warning that uh, she, meaning her desires, uh, die and that Jesus be lifted up. So it's a very it w- it's a good it's a good closer for the regular album, I think. And moving on into the deluxe tracks, we have Now Is Forever. This has got a similar feel to that uh, that song Wrecking Ball. I don't know who this is by because I've never really cared to learn the song. It's not it's not building 429's Wrecking Ball. I know that this is a uh, it's a song on uh, secular radio. It's that um, I came in like a wrecking ball, or you know, however that goes, or whatever. But it kind of has a feel similar to that. And uh, the singer very much uh, wants to be in God's kingdom and pleads that he never leaves her before it becomes a reality. Um, it's, you know, it's okay. It's prob- of, all the, of all the deluxe ones, it's probably the best one. Next up we have uh, Wordless. 
And I'm not really sure how to describe uh, the music in this one. So um, listen to it. Uh, maybe let me know what you think about it. Um, it's definitely got it's definitely got a peaceful background. Um, and the singer finds herself uh, without words in God's presence, but also at the same time doesn't want to not speak. This one I feel is one of those types of songs where you're either you're either gonna like it or you're just gonna pass it up entirely. You know, you're not really be maybe listen to it once and not really ever have a desire to come back and listen to it. It's gonna be either an either or situation for you. And the, the only reason why I feel like that is just because I'm my, I myself am very indifferent to it. On the one hand, I like it, but I just don't see myself ever coming back to it. All right, so um, next up. Uh, track 15, I believe, is uh, first from the deluxe section. Uh, deluxe sessions. How about I say that right? Um, basically, it's an acoustic version of first. It's um, the acoustic guitar and the cello have replaced the programming that was present in the regular track. And Lauren also pulls back the vocals uh, pretty drastically, actually. There's no drums in it at all uh, either. So that's really kind of the big difference. Obviously, I prefer the the normal one better, but this has some merit to it. Um, next up, we have Come Alive, Dry Bones, uh, the deluxe sessions. So this one, to me anyway, the song feels a little bit slower in this one. Uh, the drummer is clicking his sticks for the eighth notes, where you would normally hear, like, a uh, hi-hat. He's clicking his sticks for the eighth notes, which is really weird. Um, I, I, it's actually kind of annoying in a sense. It, it's over, overall this version of it is just okay. And then finally we have uh, "How Can It Be" live, and there's not uh, much of a difference. I think probably the biggest difference is that uh, Lauren takes different vocal paths, which is to be expected when you're performing things live. I still, obviously, I'm going to prefer the studio version, but it it's it's good it was it was good enough this recording of it and and you know i can't obviously one live recording is not going to define every single live performance she ever gives of the song either so i'm not gonna try to imply that it is so that's all of the tracks for the deluxe album now i should go ahead and mention that on her youtube channel in the like there's a like in the playlist for all the songs off of this album she actually has um, a couple of music videos for I Am Yours and Trust In You that when you listen to them, they actually are not the studio versions. They're actually a, in a sense, a live recording, but it's their acoustic uh, versions of the songs that never that never made it onto uh, the deluxe sessions, and uh, which is kind of cool. I'm not going to talk about those, but you should go check them out and uh, listen to them for comparison purposes. So anyway, um, so that's the album. That's all. The, that's the little extra points that I want to talk about. So let's talk about the album itself as a whole. Lauren's debut uh, to me presents a girl with a very unique voice in modern Christian music. I I, I feel like it's kind of a blend between uh, Kathy Tricoli. Which, if any of you remember uh, Kathy Tricoli's uh, music, uh, kudos to you. You are old like me. And I, but a mix of hers, and also um, if you watched uh, The Voice in uh, the end of 2017, uh, the winner, uh, Chloe Kohansky, I believe her last name is. It's uh, Lauren's voice to me kind of is like a mix between Kathy uh, Kathy's and uh, Chloe's, and. Um, it re it really is uh maybe not unique to history but definitely unique in modern uh christian music it's something you're i just i don't hear or find anywhere else and it's uh not o not only to mention that but lauren's voice itself is just so daggum powerful and so good that you know i mean this just yeah, I really, I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to gush about it, but it is very, very good voice. But anyway, back to the album, uh, it kind of wades the line, kind of, you know, kind of walks the line between pop and contemporary styles, and um, 
Lauren's uh, Lauren's voice uh, really carries the album. I think the power that she uh, sings with really helps carry the album. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this album a 4.5 out of 5. You know, this does have a few uh, forgettable songs on it, which is why I uh, knock it back a bit. But um, any criticisms that I would have about songwriting or uh, per, you know performance from her or any of the instrumentalists or anything like that honestly I think that would I think that stuff is going to be erased in time because she just she just has a, so much god-given talent in her that I think it's just it's just I think it'll go away in time just because you know that's just going to be more more ex, the more experience that she gets the better she's going to get obviously and it's just she's going to become something fantastic if she sticks with it uh, centricity really needed a strong female vocalist and they got one they really did they really got a um for i hate to use this word again but they really they really found a star they found a diamond in a sense with her and now and now um that they have her you know centricity has a veteran in Aaron shoes they have a good solid group in unspoken now they have a strong female artist and uh Lauren Daigle, and they've also got um, a young male up-and-comer in Jordan Felice. So, uh, Centricity is actually starting to look really strong now. They obviously don't have the monopoly that Sparrow has, but they are, you know, they have definitely become um, a force to be reckoned with in the Christian music world. So, good job, Centricity. Good job, Lauren Daigle. Um, I expect great things. Uh, from her career, I look forward to her next album, which, you know, I, I believe she has released a Christmas album since uh, this debut. So we are high, we are high due for a new Lauren Daigle album, and I um I hope it comes out at some point this year. You know, we'll we'll be we'll be looking forward to that if it does. If not if not this year, def definitely by early next year. But I would prefer it to be this year. So. Um, anyway, real quick, the tracks that I liked, um, obviously my, uh, my favorites would include How Can It Be, which, of course, again, I think is the best song in this entire album. Uh, also, Trust In You, Oh Lord, and Come Alive, Dry Bones. For, I also am going to recommend First, Loyal, and Here's My Heart. And I put Here's My Heart in the uh, the second tier recommendations just because, again, you know, it has that slow start to it. But by the end of it, it is uh, phenomenal. And I'll go ahead and mention again, uh, just for reiteration, Now Is Forever, I think, of all the deluxe songs. I don't put, I don't put this with my second tier recommendations. However, I will recommend uh, Now Is Forever as the better of... Uh, the new songs or the acoustic versions that were introduced in the deluxe album. So anyway, that that's my song tier uh, recommendation list. And I hope, I hope you guys uh, will agree with that. If you don't let me know, I'd love to hear your opinions about it. Aside from that though, that's going to do it for this review. I've been wanting to talk about Lauren for a while and I'm glad I finally got the chance to do it. And uh, coming up, for future reviews, I'm going to um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to review uh, that album I got from Dan Bremis at Winter Jam, the one that has uh, not officially, as of this recording, been released yet. I want to go ahead and try to push that out as quick as I can, and then I'm going to honor a fan's request to review some Michael W. Smith from the 1990s. Um, I'll probably, I'll probably be reviewing um, "I'll Lead You Home," and, uh, and that's going to be uh, definitely a dramatic shift from going over some of the modern music. But I want to go ahead and I want to honor uh, that request, and then we can get back into some more modern music, and then go back uh, to the golden age for a little bit. So. That, anyway, so that's that's the schedule as far as the music reviews are concerned, so please stick around for that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for listening to it, and I'm going to go ahead and send us off. 
by saying, uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and please, as always, take care.